There is a number of passages in the Bible that can get you canceled immediately in culture today. And to be honest, this is, this is one of the passages and you are really close to be canceled as you preach the passage. I, as I was reading the passage, I was imagining like, this is similar in the culture today than I don't know, but you really like, you want to get canceled immediately, give a microphone to Nana and record her. Because sometimes I want Nana say stuff like it is, and it's funny. I got introduced once by a Nana, and this is the way that she introduced me. Oh, this is, this is my friend, it's called Tagle. He's a foreigner, but don't worry, he's one of the good ones. <laughs> and then you're like, thank you, Nana. <laughs> See, that's a beautiful way to introduce. Say, let me slap a microphone in you, record you, and you are canceled completely. I think Peter and the Bible was trying to cancel me. Let's go on and read what the passage starts saying. Likewise, wife, be subject to your own husband. Okay, that's that's the line. Just. Do I on live stream now? Let me just read this looking at the camera. Likewise, wife, be subject to your own husband. Cancel by the culture today. As we are trying to explain the passage and we are trying to understand what the Bible is saying, and we also need to understand what the Bible is not saying. Submission. We are talking today about submission and we need to understand what submission is, what submission is not, and how as a Christian we navigate this passage with the understanding of what it meant in the Bible and what it means for us today. Let me explain you something about the church of the New Testament. And you will understand that the church in the New Testament have a lot of similarities with the church today. The vast majority of the church in the New Testament were women, okay? And the vast majority of those women were married with people that were not Christian. When you read the passage and you try to understand a bit more, this, this is what we read. So that even if some do not obey the word, which is basically even if your husband is not a Christian, they may be won without word by the conduct of their wife when they see your respectful and pure conduct. So we are talking about submission, but this is why what submission is not. Peter and the Bible is saying, submit to your husband, but it's not saying that when you submit to your husband, you need to do every single thing that your husband tells you to do. That's not what it's saying. It is not saying submit to your husband if you are being abused. It's not saying that. It doesn't say submit to your husband if he's breaking every single marital vow. It's not saying that. If you study the passage, you will understand that some people come and say, you need to submit without asking any question, and then you are saying, no, the Bible is not explaining that. If the Bible in this passage, and, and Peter with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, had to write all the cases in which you should not submit to your husband, and you get the help of a wife, we will never finish the Bible because you have a long list of things. But when we interpret this passage in the bigger scope of the whole Bible, we understand that there are things in which we are not called as a wife to submit. If your husband asks you to don't follow the Lord, you don't submit. If your husband wants to abuse you, you don't submit. If your husband breaks the marital vow, you don't submit. That's what submission is not. God and the gospel give us freedom. And God and the gospel will not ask us to lose that freedom that he is given to us. 
Let's go and explain what this submission will look like and how we can explore it today. Number one, he is saying that they might be one without a word by the conduct of the wife. So they see your respectful and pure conduct. Submission is dependent. And in this case, it's both for the wife married with a non-believer and for the wife married with a believer. In this submission, it means to work in a partnership together. To work in a respectful and perfect conduct. When we read the Confession of San Agustin, that is one of the classical books that we can read as a Christian. There is something that bypasses a lot of people reading. And it's the fact that San Agustin's father was not a Christian. The mother was. And the mother behaved in a way and showed Jesus in a way in the household all the time with the conduct, with the way that she behaved, in the way that she talked, in the way that she loved San Agustin and the husband. Then it took years and years, but eventually San Agustin's father, through the testimony of the mother, gave his life to the world, to, to God. The situation in this has a lot to do because we can get the mostly misquote quote of some phrases of a sea, preach all the time, and if necessary, using words. A lot of people use this passage to do that. that that's a total idiocy. But this is what he's saying. He's saying, so even if they don't know that may be one without a word by the conduct of their wife. Your husband needs to know why you are behaving in that way. Okay, if he's not a Christian. You are not behaving in that way and you are not treating him with that love only because you are amazing and, and he is wonderful. You are doing that because God has commanded us and the power of the Holy Spirit inside you has transformed you in a way that you can do it. How can we do it? Let's go and read, continue reading the passage and say, what are some of the examples that Peter is pointing out to us in how to do that? Do not let your adorning being external, the braiding of hair and the putting of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the perishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight, is very precious. In this case, we have the literal reader of the Bible. And the literal reader of the Bible is the, the same person that when he's reading a recipe for an, a sponge cake, put a literal sponge in the cake. I am making an a sponge cake. There is a sponge with a bit of meringue, and that's a cake. And to double take in my hopeful joke is the same person that called somebody Victoria to hold the sponge hashtag Victoria sponge cake. You get people in the church that do that. And then you get churches and women cannot wear gold, cannot braid the hair, and cannot use any makeup. Why? Because this is what the Bible says. The Bible says that do not let your adorning, the braiding of hair and the putting of gold jewelry or the clothing that you wear. Do you think we should read that literal and put in the offerings all gold items that you have, please? That's not. The Bible is saying where your priorities lay. Okay? In society today, the priorities for a woman and a young lady growing up today is mostly in the size of the dress that she can wear than in the thoughts and feelings that she can have. And let's say, surprise, surprise, 
We haven't changed much as a society because you are, people say, the Bible is outdated. No, hello. It's not outdated at all. In the Roman and Greco-Roman society, the value of the woman it was in all that she looked. But nothing in how she looked like. The stone was in the mirror. But how a beautiful thing that Jesus Christ do not look just or whatever reflection you get in the mirror, but whatever you have inside you. And let's be honest, it doesn't matter how much you hit the gym, how healthy you eat, or the shampoo that you wear. If the hair is going to fall, it's going to fall. If the belly is going to explode, it's going to explode because Father Time doesn't forgive anybody. What Peter is saying is, can you put importance in the right thing. Can you do things in the right way? Sometimes we are very fanciful in putting importance in things that are not the best. We spend like an hour and a half, and this is something that apply even to the young men today. At my first week in Belfast Bible College, we have a residential in Castlewell Castle. And the fellow that I was sleeping with in the room wake up at 6 a.m. Which I thought, this is fantastic. We are going to wake up early to do press-ups, do song exercise, and go for a run. No, he wake up at 6 a.m. to start his caring morning routine. And I'm going to be cancelled again, but I say stuff to him that um, like I, I, I say, like, like, are you kidding me? I was blown out of my mind. He just went, had the shower, then got the, her dryer, then cream, then makeup, and I was like, what is going on here? And I, I, at some point, I just cried out to the Lord and said, I don't want to be in this country. Send me back home. Out of all the stuff that he could have done for an hour and a half, he definitely was doing the wrong thing. And then he say, I care about my body. And the same way that he was stuffing a Big Mac all over his face. And I was like, oh boy. The Bible passage is pointing out what is the important thing? It's not telling you don't ever use makeup ever, ever again. It's not telling you take your earrings and your necklace and put it away. It's saying, no, no. It's saying, the adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit in which God's sight is very precious. He's saying, can you start the adorning of your body from inside out instead from outside in and never finish? Because if it starts raining and you forgot your umbrella, all the products are going to smear out. All the hair straining, it doesn't matter if you have GHD or whatever. If it starts raining and there is a bit of humidity and this is a call back to a TV show that some of you watch, you will have Monica hair. If you watch Friends, you know what Monica hair is. If you haven't watched it, you haven't missed it too much. But that's the case. What is the important thing for you? Because God doesn't care the color of your blouse or the size of your dress or your fancy necklace. He cares about your heart. And if you work in your heart, this is the stuff that continues. For this is how the holy woman who hope in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husband, as Sarah obeyed, calling him Lord. 
And then you're like, okay, I do I have to call my husband Lord? Oh, give me a break, Tagli. Feminism 2.0 never happening. Hashtag I am free. Hashtag me too, or whatever you want to say. Listen, this is a beauty, this is a beautiful thing of the passage. When, when Peter is calling back to the passage in which Sarah called Abraham Lord, is the passage when the angels of the Lord came to talk with Abraham. And they were telling Abraham that by this time next year, when I come, you are going to have a baby. And then Sarah, in laughter and in joy, said, my Lord is too old for that. Thing has stopped working a long, long time ago. And then in a laugh, she said that. When you submit to your husband and the right submission, no a submission that is outside the law of God. When did you made to your husband and you actually can do it? You are going to have joy. You are going to have laughter. And you are going to have rejoice. But there is a two way. Okay. There is a two way. And sometimes when you preach this passage, if you are in a literal church, the men say, and that's the sermon, ladies. Cook a nice meal for your husband. Wash the clothes. And a smile. That's the end of the sermon. That's my job done. But the passage continues. Because Abraham was called Lord by Sarah, but Abraham protected Sarah, cared for Sarah, loved Sarah. And there is a lot of other things. Because when you do this, this is what the Bible says. Likewise, husband, live with your wife in an understanding way. Understanding way doesn't mean give your car and so she can do shopping with all the things that you have. That's not the understanding way. There is a more showing honor to the woman as a weaker vessel. Since they are hers with you in the grace of life. So that your prayer may not be hindered. Okay, girls, this is now the place in which you elbow your husband and say, this is what you need to do now. This is the stuff that we have to do now, husband. In order to have a partnership, it's safe. B, live with your wife in an understanding manner. Regardless of what society says, and let's go for the cancellation, the total cancellation now. Regardless of what society says, we are different. Okay? Men and women are different. You want a better show to that? Put a bloke that we have seen in practical way. Put a bloke to box against women. We are different. Put a bloke to swim against women. We are different. It is not talking here that women are a weaker vessel in order to denigrate women, but it's saying that women are a weaker vessel in order to slap the man in the face and say, protect, care for the ladies. So I say to the girls, it's not rocket science. It's not saying that we cannot work together. It's like we are different. The design of God is different. The world doesn't want to hear that. But sometimes you, don't, you only need to look at the, at the mirror and you will notice we are different. Be understanding of the difference that we have and showing honor, honor to the woman. Do you know what it means showing honor to the woman? Don't force yourself into the woman. Don't use your muscles and strength against a woman. Do not abuse a woman. Do not 
ask her to submit to things that are not right. Understand the difference. And understand that in the case of a Christian marriage, you are doing the role of Jesus. As she said to you in love, you give your life for her. So ladies, you submit to somebody that will give his life for you. That's the important thing. As we submit to God, then he gives his life for us. Because this is the important thing. Even though we mention the weaker vessel, this is the part that people like to forget about the past. It says, since they are herds with you. Do you notice that? It doesn't mean that I am the herd of the grace or love of God. But who is the herd of the grace of, of the love of God? Both. It doesn't say under you. It doesn't say either above you. That's the problem that we have sometimes. That we try to put one gender above the other. He said, with you. When he say with you, English is my second language now, so let me just, we say with you what he's saying. The same level. Did I have my interpretation of the English okay in this? Because the interpretation on the Greek is the same, the same level. We are herds of the grace of God together. Okay? Together. And this is the important thing. And this is for us husbands. If we don't do what God is calling us to do, and if we don't, we don't care, we don't treat our wife and the ladies as equal, in the kingdom of God, our prayers are going to be hindered. And that's a consequence that is immediate. Our communication and understanding with the Lord. This is what the Bible says, okay? Our communication and understanding with the Lord is dependent on the way in which we treat and behave with our wife. Oh, wow. That's a bit. What? You don't think, <laughs> what is going on here? It's dependent. Because the relationship that we are called to have with each other is a relationship that point out to something else. That's why Christians are so feisty about marriage. That's why Christians are so feisty about who, whom, and why, and how we get married. Because this is a pointing out to somebody else. It's pointing out to the relationship of the church and Christ. The church as the wife and Christ as a husband. And the call of a Christian couple or a Christian marriage is to reflect that relationship every single day. And when we reflect that, our prayers are heard. There is no division or barrier between us. And that's what we strive for. So if you are married with somebody that is not a Christian, as many of the ladies in the Bible and in the church, we are praying. We are working. So you can have this. But the Bible in other points says, like, if you cannot have this and, and there is not a sign of whatsoever the husband's role is in your own marriage, you don't have 
to submit in that way. Okay? And for us husbands, if you are married to somebody that is not a Christian, we strive for that too. If you want to have a bit of more clarification about what to do when you are not a Christian, I would refer to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. There is a bit of more clarity on that. But we strive for that. Because with our behavior and showing Jesus, we pray that the unbelieving spouse will be inspired by Jesus in all and says, I want that too. And for some of us that are married with somebody that is a Christian, we are called to reflect, to reflect and to point out to the church and Christ, to the church and Christ in everything that we do. And with submission, regardless of what the society say, comes freedom and comes joy and comes fulfillment. Amen. Let's stand and sing together.